Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for Paths into XR Development. Before I bring on our speaker, I have a few quick things to go over. Please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone, including our speaker. We want the reactors to be a place everyone feels welcome. Today's session is pre-recorded, but April is here to take your live questions from the chat and we'll be answering a few questions at the end of the session. So please feel free to use the live YouTube chat to ask those questions. We'll also be sharing some links that go along with today's content, as well as to our Reactor Meetup page if you're interested in checking out any other sessions we have coming up. Today's session will be recorded and added to our YouTube page in 24 to 48 hours. And finally, near the end, I'll be sharing a link to our Reactor survey. If you have a few minutes, we would greatly appreciate your feedback. I will now start the recording. And like I said, April is here to take your questions. Thank you all so much. My name is April Spate. I lead the Spatial Computing Cloud Advocacy Team here at Microsoft. Our team has partnered with the Mixed Reality Team and the Microsoft Reactor to bring you this series across various topics in XR development. Now, if you are a beginner, welcome. I am so excited to have you here. First of all, congratulations on deciding on embarking on this journey in XR development. I know how fun, exciting, challenging, difficult, but yet still fun that this can all be because I was literally in your shoes two years ago and here I am today to help you all get started. If you have experience in this particular space, the topics that I'm going to cover over the next couple of months may be a bit too entry level for you. If that's the case, I want you to head over to docs.microsoft.com, check out some of the different documentation that we have there as we do cover a variety of topics and we do dive a little bit deeper on some more advanced topics that you may find to be very helpful for you. However, if you say, you know what, I don't care, I just wanna come hang out with you all, that's totally cool too, the more the merrier and I like hanging out. So with that said, I do wanna just set some ground rules here, if you will. Everything I'm going to cover over the next couple of months is not necessarily an exhaustive list of everything that's available in this space. Why is that? Because the space is just so big. It is difficult to cover everything that we have, but what I've done is my best to bring together as much as I can into various sessions, but I do insist that you explore, explore, explore. There's so much out here and things are always changing, which is a good thing, honestly, because who wants to be in a technology space that's, you know, nothing's evolving. Now, the other thing I want to say is that I do have notes along with me for the ride as well. So if you happen to see me looking down that's because I am checking out my notes I have them because I don't want to miss out anything and cut you all short on information that I have to give now with that said we're going to go ahead and get started we're first going to talk about some definitions with regards to XR development to make sure that we're all on the same page as I continue to throw these terms out at you we're going to start off with extended reality now, extended reality, which is XR for short, is an umbrella term for the various different facets of realities. That's going to be augmented reality, virtual reality, spatial computing, which is the area in which I work, mixed reality, and then there's also metaverse as well, which I'm sure by now, if you're here, you've heard that term at some point over the course of the past couple of months. Starting off with augmented reality. Augmented reality is when you're going to have digital objects that are overlaid on top of our real world view. Now, perfect examples of that are going to be Snapchat filters or Instagram filters or TikTok filters um, as an example. Another one is also going to be for those of you who have tried out on e-commerce sites where you can try in your space. You have a piece of furniture that you can literally see in your space as though it's actually there. That's going to be augmented reality. Next, we're going to have virtual reality or VR for short. So virtual reality is when you're going to be immersed in this virtual world. You can't see the real world surrounding you. All you can see is whatever is in that virtual world. Usually you'll see games in this area, but that's not the only use case. 
but an example of games would be Beat Saber. Um, my favorite happens to be Richie's Plank. It's not quite a game, it's more of an experience where you're on top of this building on a plank, and if you look down, you can see the city below you. It feels very, very, very real. And there's also opportunities to actually watch games as well in VR. I've done that. I've watched basketball games, for example. So that's VR. Then we have mixed reality. So mixed reality is when you're going to blend the digital world and the real world seamlessly. And what's going to happen is that digital objects will be able to interact with the real world environment. It's the coolest thing to see. If you happen to have seen HoloLens demos or Magic Leap demos, uh, for example, where there's objects that are aware or digital objects specifically, that are aware of the real world objects around you, that's going to be mixed reality. I would suggest checking out any HoloLens demos as an example to get an idea of what that's like. And then we're gonna have metaverse. So the definition of metaverse, it's still being workshopped. I will definitely say that. Um, I've come up with a definition that I've borrowed different pieces from here and there, other places. I'm gonna actually make sure I read this verbatim so I don't mess this up. Metaverse is a highly immersive set of persistent virtual spaces where you can gather with others to socialize, work, and play. So a metaverse as a concept is not new, first and foremost. It's been around forever. However, in recent time, if you will, it has become more popularized. Now, the metaverse itself is not something that is owned by any one person, company, or entity. It's actually for everyone. Anyone can contribute to the metaverse as well. And that's probably as much as I'm gonna cover about metaverse today. If you wanna learn more about metaverse or follow what's happening, have fun at it on the internet. There's plenty of information out there. Now, what I wanna share with you are three approaches that you can take to get started with XR development. I spent some time online asking others in the community, hey, how did you get started with XR development? What I discovered is that there's no one way, there's no one right way either to actually do it. It really is a matter of personal preference. So with that said, if you wanna know my own personal journey, I think I had some courses that I found and then from there I attended a workshop and I did a hackathon as an example. Um, I will say this area, it's, it's, it's very interesting because it is becoming even more popularized nowadays. There is more available as time goes on for learning and how to get started. But in any case, from the research that I've done, from the folks that I spoke with, I've narrowed things down into three categories of how, or three approaches, if you will, of how you can get into XR development. And we're going to start off with the first one which is a structured course. So a structured course, those are gonna be your classes, any courses that you do online on like Unity or Coursera, and even over here at Microsoft, with Microsoft Learn, we have material in a similar format as well. Structured courses, they provide guidance on a set order of topics for you to learn. They're usually going to be accompanied with projects as well, which is very helpful because you're going to be given step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this project. And if you are in the job market and you want to start looking for jobs in XR, you're now going to have a portfolio that you can put together, a project that you create in these courses. So the thing about courses, however, that you want to be very wary of is that because technology is changing so much in the space, they can become outdated. Some can be outdated relatively quickly. With that said, what I would suggest is that if you are taking the course approach, that you do check out the published date. In addition, check to see if the author or the instructor has happened to have posted any potential updates with regards to when you know X section was updated or X project was updated. This is going to be helpful because the worst thing to happen is that you're in the groove, you're learning, you have your platform set up, you just imported the project sample that they gave you, and now you have a ton of errors in Unity, for example, because things are outdated. I have been there, I don't want you to experience that. So do your due diligence to check to ensure that the project or the course is up to date. The next thing is that with courses, 
sometimes what's going to happen or at least i've seen is that they'll start off very broad like an intro to ar vr and then at some point they kind of just i don't know where they niche down and they put you into this one targeted path that you can take with regards to technology so it may start broad for example and then out of nowhere everything going forward is based on using unity and it's not a bad thing However, it can be limiting if you do not venture beyond that course and go learn more. So do keep that in mind as well for these courses. Now, the other thing that I would also suggest is that if you are taking these online courses, please do one at a time. Do not do three at a time. Really focus in on one. And then once you've completed that one, then you can go venture out to see if there happens to be another one that's of interest that may have actually skipped over a topic that wasn't covered. So courses, they're great. I've done it. There's a variety of places to find them. As I mentioned, Udemy, Coursera, there's LinkedIn Learning. Um, there's also Microsoft Learning Docs as well. The next approach that you can take is creating a project. So the project based approach is when you have an idea and you say, you know what, I want to go make that thing. Now, what's great about that is that you have full autonomy over what it is that you can create. You can take as long as you want. You can add whatever features you want. And that's really great. The thing with this approach is if you're brand new here, you might not quite know where to start. So with that said, what I would suggest is that if you're taking the I'm going to learn by creating approach, do explore existing projects that are in the AR, VR space, whatever reality you decide to create for. Why is that? Well, those projects are more than likely already going to have the structure that you're going to look for. It'll hopefully help you identify different things that need to be included. And then from there, you can go venture out and see how you can bring those elements or relate them back to your own actual project. Now, with this project-based approach, also really helpful for those of you who are going to go out and shop around for a new job because this is now something that you can add to your portfolio it's something that you've done and because it's something that was from the geniusness of your own mind you can literally speak to it much more in depth compared to a project that someone had given you to work on because it's your own project baby it's your thing so that's why a project-based approach is going to be great for that or if you're starting up your own company your own product that you want to sell as well or monetize as for a bit more advice if you're going to take this approach consider partnering up with someone else why well you can either pair a program together which is great because you're learning together with someone especially if that someone has more experience or it can help offload some of what needs to happen to go into the project so that way you're not overwhelming yourself with so much to learn where you can really just narrow in on a few certain areas. With creating projects on your own, I think it's a really great opportunity and I know that our ideas can span for miles. However, get very specific and start with the MVP. You don't have to create the world's greatest app to start off with. Start with an MVP that's going to be your most valuable product. It's going to be what it is that needs to be created, that has a functionality that you want to have in an app to display to the world. Start off with that, publish it, get some feedback, and then iterate on it. If you spend too long trying to create the world's perfect project, then it may never actually release so do start with an mvp especially if you're brand new to this space and the third approach is going to be contributing to an open source project so open source projects are going to be projects that are available for the general public to utilize and contribute to as well so the great thing about open source projects is that the project's been created already all you really need to do is add a feature for example, to the project. And that makes things a bit more approachable rather than starting from scratch. Now, if you are contributing to an open source project, do keep in mind that it's not your project. Someone else has created this project and they have set the ground rules for how they would like others to contribute. And that is something that you really do need to keep in mind. 
In addition to open source projects, there are going to be rules that you'll need to follow with regards to getting whatever it is that you're creating as part of the actual project. So do read those guidelines that are posted. You're typically able to find these in places um, like GitHub, for example. Usually when folks create something and they share on social media, you can ask them if the project's open source. If they don't mention it's open source, feel free to ask them. The worst thing that they can do is say no. If it is great, because then you can go to the repo, you can learn more about it as well, and you can contribute in addition to that. Now, the other thing about open source projects is that if you're not sure what to contribute, check out the GitHub issues um, as an example. Typically, people will post in there what they are having issues with or what features they want to see available. That can become your inspiration of how you can contribute. In addition to that, I would also say starting small as well. Your contribution doesn't have to be massive. Start with something smaller, see how you enjoy that experience creating it, see how it works out, and then you can always iterate on that later or contribute in a much larger way later down the road. So those are gonna be what I've identified as the three approaches, that's a four, the three approaches for getting into XR development. All right, so now that we got the approaches out of the way, I do wanna go through some devices and some platforms, some toolkits, some SDKs, some frameworks that I want you to be cognizant of as you're thinking about what it is that you wanna learn. I wanna start off with devices. Now, there are a variety of devices available on the market for AR and VR. I have a couple here to share with you today. We're going to first start with your head-mounted devices. So head-mounted devices, also referred to as HMD, they're going to be devices that you can literally mount or wear. And so they're going to be good for AR as well as VR. In most cases, they have a camera, a microphone, and speakers as well. And in addition to that, they also come with motion controllers in some cases, or you can also use your hands to interact. So example, I have a HoloLens here, which is gonna be great for augmented reality, mixed reality. And with this particular device, I can see around me, which is great. And there's a visor that also comes up. The other option that I have here is going to be for VR. So it's an Oculus Quest. And so, if I turn this around, you notice here on the inside, you're going to not be able to see anything around you. So that's going to be that immersion that I mentioned earlier. And with the Quest happens to be motion controllers. So this is what you're going to use to interact. However, you can also use your hands as well with the Oculus Quest, which is pretty cool. Next, we're going to have smart glasses. Now, I haven't quite ventured into smart glasses yet, but I do have a regular pair of glasses just for demonstration purposes to give you an idea of what's happening. Smart glasses are gonna look like, in most cases, regular glasses. Um, with the exception of the Google Glass. I had a Google Glass when they first came out. It didn't quite have this glasses look, but smart glasses these days, they do have more of that glasses look. Now, the glasses itself, the brain of it, if you will, or the CPU is going to be along one of these arms, if you will. And so that's where you're gonna get all that functionality that's available with the glasses. Now, these are also going to have a, in most cases, a camera and speakers, potentially a microphone maybe, but in either case, when you have these on, you're going to be able to see things directly through the lenses of the glasses. Now, the thing about smart glasses is that for interaction, let me bring these back into the view, you're typically going to be able to interact either with the arm, usually it's going to be like a tapping motion, a swiping if you will, or you're going to be able to do some sort of gestures with your hands in front of the glasses. So. That's how you want to interact with those. Examples include the in real light, there's the snap spectacles, there's Arabian stories as well. And those are going to be your smart glasses. Next, we have mobile. So mobile, those are going to be your, your phones. Right now, I usually happen to use my iPhone. Um, there's tablets as well. For mobile, it's typically going to be augmented reality, virtual reality with a little asterisk next to it. And I'll explain why in a bit. 
But in either case, it is going to require AR software. So if you have an Android device, you're going to need AR Core. And if you have an Apple device, you're going to, or an iOS device, you're going to need AR Kit. With regards to virtual reality, you can do or have an, a virtual reality experience with a mobile device. Um, it is going to require specific VR app in order to view virtual reality on your phone. Now, with regards to how you can even be immersed, you might be wondering, well, long ago, there were these devices um, known as viewers that came to be. So Google created the Google Cardboard and from there evolved many fabulous forms, including this viewer from Palace VR that I have. Now, how does this actually work? You're going to open this up inside. You're going to be able to place the cell phone in one spot. Here I have a Galaxy and you can close that up. This was from my iPhone like a couple of generations ago, so it doesn't close right now. In either case, on the other end is where you have the lenses and that's what you're going to view into. The app that you're actually, or the experience that you're going to try out, it's going to display two images. And those two images, one is going to be offset. It's going to trick your brain into thinking that you're seeing one and it's going to add a sense of depth as well. So that's how you get the whole, this is 3D, we're in VR effect. And there are some opportunities available to still try that out today. I don't see it too much, but just know that it is an option. Now, with regards to how you can interact in general, so if you're doing the viewer option, usually there was a button on the viewer somewhere, so it's very limited in interactions. If you're doing something on mobile for AR, as an example, usually you'll touch the screen or you'll do some sort of potential gesture, and you can also include voice as well. Now, options include, here for example, I have a iPad, iPhone as well, which is what I'm recording on. And then also I happen to have an Android device here, a Samsung Galaxy. So there's way more options available if you are taking the mobile route, but it will need to be a smartphone because you do need that software. Next, we're going to have haptics. Really wish that I had haptics here with me, but those are going to be devices that are going to enable you to um, create an experience of touch. It applies forces, vibrations, or motions as well. And so those are going to be like your haptic gloves, for example, so that way if you have on a glove and you're doing, let's say, an AR or a VR experience, if you're touching something in the virtual world, you're going to feel that sensation across your fingers. Haptic body suits, if Myself and someone else wearing a bodysuit where the hug, I can actually feel their embrace. Pretty cool concept in my personal opinion. Okay, next up, we're gonna have some platforms and some engines. I have both low code, no code, as well as code um, options available as well. So pick your poison. Starting off with low code, no code, Adobe Arrow. It's by Adobe, it's a platform for creating AR experiences. There is some limitations with regards to who has access to it. It is available on iOS, on mobile, and then on PC for desktop only. So those are the only limitations, but there is no code required to try it out. Next, Reality Composer. That's going to be from Apple. And with Reality Composer, you can create AR experiences on your iPhone as well as your iPad, and you can also do that on a Mac as well. If you wanna do some coding, then you can do some stuff for interactions using Swift, which is Apple's language, but that's not a requirement to create experiences and create simple interactions. Next, there's going to be Spark AR. So that's gonna be from the folks over at Meta, and they uh, include templates as well as assets for creating AR experiences. So again, no code necessary. necessary. If you do wanna do some more advanced things, then JavaScript is going to be the language that you will need for that. So next up, we have Altspace VR. That's going to be from us here at Microsoft. It's a social VR platform. You can go there for events, concerts, meetups, what have you. There's a feature in there known as the World Editor, and that's where you can create your virtual world. You can also get a bit more advanced with that and create the world in Unity, which we'll cover in a second. And then using the Altspace Uploader, you can bring that world into Unity, and that's how you'll have your more of a custom world. 
However, not requirement, you can do your building within um, Outspace itself. In addition, there is the option to create mixed reality extensions, which are going to be apps that you can use in your worlds that is going to require some code and it's going to require Node.js if you decide to take that route. But if you just want to create worlds, you can do that directly in Altspace. The next thing that we have low code, no code is going to be Power Apps, also from us here at Microsoft. It's a platform for creating low code, no code apps. There are mixed reality components in there that are just going to be drag and drop. And if you decide to get a bit more advanced with those features, you can utilize our Power FX uh, language and you can create formulas and such as well. But at a bare minimum, it's drag and drop. You don't need to add any code to get the functionality to work with viewing in mixed reality or viewing in 3D, in 3D for example. So that's gonna be your platforms for low code, no code. Next, we're going to have, for those of you who want to do some coding, uh, Unity. Unity is usually coupled with a comparison of Unreal, which is another platform. Starting off with Unity, Unity is from Unity Technologies. It is a cross-platform game engine, and you can use it to create for AR, VR, as well as MR. And you may hear often that it's easier to learn compared to Unreal, for example. There is going to be less steep of a learning curve. And if you happen to do any coding in there, which likely you will, you're going to use C Sharp as your language. They do have visual scripting available using Bolt. And I haven't explored that yet. I usually do things with code in C Sharp. With regards to Unreal, that comes from Epic Games. It's another engine. The learning curve is going to be a bit more steep with that one, but it doesn't mean don't give it a try. Very much do consider giving it a try. For Unreal, the language is going to be C++. They also have visual scripting available as well. Those are going to be known as blueprints. So either Unity or Unreal. Then there's also the option of um, if you're doing more things with like Snapchat, for example, or Snap, I would say they have Lens Studio and that's for creating AR experiences. And so there's cross-platform support, Android and iOS, which is great. And they have what's known as a script graph editor um, or a behavior helper script. And that can be great for uh, needing no code. But if you are doing some more complex things, JavaScript is going to be your language for that. Now, if you don't want an engine, you don't want to do in, any installs of anything, then you can go native instead. And so that's going to be using either, um, I'm going to suggest Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. So. First, Microsoft here, we have StereoKit. StereoKit is going to be a great option. It's an open source mixed reality library for building HoloLens and VR apps with C-sharp. Templates are provided. You can add them to your project or create one from scratch and we give you some code to start off with. Next, um, and you're gonna use C-sharp for that one. Next is gonna be Babylon.js, also from us here at Microsoft. It's a JavaScript open source framework and it's used to develop for 3D. And you can try things in the browser using what they call refer to as a Babylon JS playground, or you can do your coding in Visual Studio Code, the language that you're going to need, JavaScript. And then finally, I have A-Frame. So A-Frame, it's a web framework for building VR experiences, but you can use it for AR. With um, A-Frame, you don't have to install anything, which is great. You can open up Visual Studio Code and do your coding in there. And what you're going to need to know in regards to language is going to be HTML. Those are going to be your platforms for low code, no code. Next, I am going to cover just your toolkits. There are a variety of ones to choose from. I'm going to cover some very um, basic ones here today. And then again, please explore more that are available. So why do you want to use a toolkit? Well, toolkits are going to help prevent you from starting from scratch. They are going to become equipped with scripts um, and prefabs that'll help you with creating different interactions that you might be looking for, different objects that you want to add into your apps as well. I'm going to start off with what we have here at Microsoft, which is the Mixed Reality Toolkit. 
It's available for both Unity as well as one for Unreal. There are two separate ones, but we have an MRTK for Unity and one for Unreal. It's created to help accelerate your mixed reality development. We provide a variety of features with MRTK, including a spatial awareness system and a teleport system. So you can use it for AR, you can also use it for VR as well. And then there's also an examples hub that's included if you wanna get an idea of how some of these features actually are, try the examples hub out. Next is going to be a VRTK, which is a virtual reality toolkit. And so for that one, um, it's gonna have scripts and concepts for rapidly building VR apps in Unity. And so you'll have things like locomotion, interactions, 2D and 3D controls, like buttons, drawers, and levers as well. Next is going to be XRTK. So XRTK was created by the same folks who created MRTK back in 2018. However, the two have ventured off into two different paths today, but the two groups do come together to ensure that there is some parallel as we have new versions of MRTK that comes to surface, that XRTK also has some similarity there as well. Whether you choose to go the MRTK or the XRTK routes, personal preference. And then finally, what I have is going to be the XR Interaction Toolkit. That's going to be a package from Unity and so that one is a component-based interaction system. It's cross-platform XR controller input, haptic feedback, visual feedback, and a VR camera rig. It also has AR interaction components available as well. So those are going to be your toolkits. Again, just a couple of them, not too many, but it's a good start. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with before we head out is just some general advice for those of you who are getting started. The first thing that I want to say is please take your time. Unless you have a reason to rush through everything, take your time with learning and do be open to learning more as time goes on because there are always new things coming onto the scene with regards to XR. The next thing that I also want to share is don't let a lack of programming stop you from creating. I've shared just now plenty of low code, no code options for those of you who want to create but don't have any programming experience. If you decide to do some programming, then there are a variety of resources available online for learning how to code. I know, for example, with C Sharp, we have learn modules on Microsoft Learn, we have YouTube playlists, we have documentation on docs.microsoft.com. The same goes for a variety of other languages as well that I've mentioned today. The next thing I wanna share is do not commit to a device too soon. I know it can be tempting and I know it can be easy to convince yourself that you can't create without a device, but I promise you that you can. A lot of the platforms that I share today have features where you can actually try out your experience within the app without having to deploy it to a device. Unity is a really good example. You can enter play mode and you can try out or simulate the experience all there in the editor on your computer without having a device. If you do want to get a device, what I suggest, what I would suggest doing is instead, see how far you can get without a device, test things out on your computer as much as you can, and then eventually later invest in a device. Otherwise, if you start too soon, you might start, you might try AR, VR development, realize you hate it, and now you have a device and you're stuck with it. So again, be patient with getting a device. And then the last thing that I have is, please give back to others. As you're learning and as you progress and as you become experts and fabulous in this space, I do suggest request and ask that you do reach back out to those who are newer to this space, who are starting after you, who genuinely wanna learn and don't know where to get started or they need help or they might get stuck on something. You right now are literally, if you're new here, you are in those, you are in that position right now. And so please keep that in mind as you are approached later in your journey by folks who are new that want help on how to get started. Not only will it help them out and they'll feel really great about it, but hopefully you too will also feel great about it. Okay, that is all that I have for you today. Again, thanks for joining us. 
For those of you who are new, I am so excited that you've decided to embark on this journey in XR development. You honestly couldn't have chosen a more fun, creative tech space. Please join us for the next time that we meet. I am going to be going over some tips and steps on how to plan your apps, whether that be for AR, VR, MR, spatial, metaverse, what have you. Again, I'm April Spate. Thanks for joining us. I look forward to having you around next time and hanging out again soon. Hi everyone. Thanks for checking out the recording that I had. I am also here today in real life to answer any other questions that you may have. I am going to keep an eye on the chat. We're going to hang out for about five more minutes. And um, as I'm waiting for questions to come in, I'll just talk a bit more in general about learning for AR and VR development. Otherwise, um, I'm also looking for questions. But I will share with you all for my own personal self, I started out in this space um, in 2019, I will say, and I haven't looked back since. It's It's been a whirlwind of an adventure. And I've been really thankful for folks who have been able to help out with getting an idea of where to start with regards to development. I've seen a lot change and I'm sure for some of you who may have um, be a bit more seasoned in this industry, you yourselves have probably also seen a lot change over time. Uh, there's way more content that exists these days with regards to learning. We're starting to see more, um, more actual courses being taught in universities, for example. There's boot camps that exist today as well. There's more YouTube content creators that are publishing content on YouTube as well to help folks learn. And I think now is a really great time if this is something that you are interested in learning more, um, learning more about that you can get started. So I'm gonna head over into comments. There's a lot, I'm trying to get through them all. So be patient with me, everyone. Let's see. So I'm starting at the beginning, so I'm going to try to get to everyone's questions. So earlier there was a question on if there is a need for a HoloLens 2 during the development, and are there any emulators that allow you to test all the functionality on Windows 10 machines? So as I shared, if you are doing your development, let's say in Unity, for example, um, for a HoloLens, you don't necessarily 100% need to start off right off the bat with a HoloLens. You can do testing in Unity. I personally don't um, utilize Unreal, but I will say for sure, if you're doing Unity, you can try things out there in play mode. We also do have an emulator as well for HoloLens. And then someone had answered that <laughs> shortly after that. So thank you very much, Gerald, for answering um, Dio's question. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. So Rejoice, hopefully I'm saying your first name correctly. What if we learn what if we learn to develop for, say, HoloLens with Unity right now and later some other devices or software has become popular? Will it be easier to move on developing for the newer tech? So I like to compare AR VR development similar to how um, the approach that's usually taken when people are learning programming languages in general. There's usually the general rule of thumb is that if you learn one programming language, then you have a better chance transitioning to another one because you have an understanding of the underlying concepts and also syntax. When it comes to doing AR VR development, likewise, I would say once you get a feel for how things um, development is done for one platform, it's not going to necessarily be apples to apples transitioning to another platform, but there are going to be some things that you have an idea of, of how it works. Perfect example, for the longest ever since I started, I only ever used MRTK. And then when I started exploring more with VR development and with Unity, that's when I started looking more into um, into the XR TK, like, so like the package. And so even though they weren't exactly one-to-one -to, -one to the same, they uh, definitely had some overlap conceptually. So it's more so looking to see where the concepts can um, overlap, but I don't feel as though it's impossible to go from one to the other. Okay, so Dio did mention Google Glasses and I mentioned that as well. I was able to actually um, take part in the program that they had long ago um, to sign up for um, 
let's see. Oh, Fernando mentioned Euphoria. So yes, I did not mention Euphoria. So Fernando shared, if you want to start with Little Learning Curve, try Euphoria Studio. It is the easiest platform to develop and can be published in mobile and HoloLens. Yes, Euphoria, um, I am definitely a fan. I tried that out when I was doing some AR development with my iPhone. And I had created this uh, this 3D model, uh, this animated 3D model that I got from Mixamo, which by the way, is a really good platform if you are looking for um, um, royalty free animated models. I was able to bring in that model and using the way I did the app, it detected a word in like the real world. And if it saw that word, then the animated ca character popped up. So I had her like dancing. So whenever um, it saw the word, she would come out of nowhere and start dancing. Um, very, very, um, very, very uh, approachable manner of, of trying to use AR, I will say. I don't even know if I even did any coding for that. I think a lot of it was like drag and drop. Um, let's see. Let's see what else we hear. Okay. So there's another question from DL. I'm assuming this question might be for me, might be for the general um, folks here in the chat, but among the different texts, with specifically for code, which one did I do I prefer? Um, and if explored any of them already. So a lot of what I shared, I have had the chance to explore. I don't have any one in particular that I feel I would tell people 100% go learn this no matter what. A lot of it does come down to per, um, personal preference. I personally started with Unity because that was the path that someone set me on. And so I did touch upon that earlier is that when you are exploring different courses, sometimes things can really set you on one path. But um, outside of that, I like a lot of the low code, no code platforms as well. Um, while starting to learn, I also tried out with Adobe Arrow because it literally, there was no code involved at all. So it was great. Um, I recently tried out um, Apple's Reality Composer as well as um, it is slipping my mind right now, but the other program that they have where you can um, create 3D models. And so I, I think it just really depends on um, where you're coming from. When I started, I didn't have any C-sharp knowledge. I only knew Python. And because Unity was the only thing that I was aware of, that's what I personally learned. So I think by default, like I have a bias towards saying, yes, learn that. But I also want to be realistic with everyone that that's not the path you have to go on. There's a lot that's available out there. So do be mindful of that as well as you're reaching out to other folks with regards to where to start because they may have personal opinions just purely because that's the only path they ever really took, but do explore. I know some people might not like that, but do explore because <laughs> there's a lot of options available. Um, so yeah, someone did say in here, it's their first time hearing a lot of the other names. And so that's, that proves my point exactly. Uh, yes, Patricia. There are a lot of no code, um, low code uh, platforms. There's, there's, I'm hoping there's more to come, but there, there's a good amount as well. Let's see. Uh, Gerald made a really great point. You'll have to do thorough research to weigh out your own pros and cons and cost benefit analysis in your development path. 100%. That is very, very important. Um, let's see. So DL asks, wondering which one would be easy to pick up. Easy is going to be a relative term. <laughs> it depends on the person. So if you want to try something that's going to be 100% drag and drop, um, the low code, no code platforms I mentioned will be great. Adobe Arrow, I would say is probably um, one that I can say would be great. However, just also knowing that some of the platforms, they are going to be limited with regards to what devices you can use. So for Adobe Arrow, as an example, if you happen to have an iOS device, then have at it. You can go ahead and try it. If you happen to be on Android, then that's when it's not a good option um, for you. But if you are more into, um, even with Reality um, Composer with Apple, if you have an iPhone, I think that um, that experience is actually pretty good as well. If you do want to code, um, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to create uh, like filters for social media, I wouldn't point you to like Unity, for example. I'd probably point you to one of the other platforms um, like uh, 
like, uh, oh my goodness, I'm losing a train of thought, but one of the ones that Snap has, for example, or one that Meta has for, uh, for uh, Instagram. Let's see. All right. And I am coming to an end here. All right, I see that we've had someone try out Stereo Kit. Rod, that's good. Um, Nolibi 3D did mention that one of the great things we love about the AR MR community is that it is so diverse and inclusive. The community is so supportive. I will say 100%, that is something that um, I 1000% agree with. The way I got started, honestly, I saw a tweet on Twitter and I just generally put out into the world, how can I get started? And I was flooded with responses, which is a good thing um, to be flooded with positive responses <laughs> on Twitter, I would say. But um, that's why I'll, I suggest for those of you who are starting out, if you are, um, as you are learning and as you progress and as you become really great in this space, do give back to folks who are starting out. You just never know whose life you're going to change. Um, when I started out in this in this area, I was a program manager here at Microsoft doing nothing AR VR related. And then once I reached out for resources, maybe six months later, I now officially worked in this space back in 2019. So you never know whose life you can change. Um, I've seen folks um, that have attended events that we've had here where I've mentioned just miscellaneous features that are available even with our own tools that they've been able to in, um, incorporate into their actual products that they sell out in the real world. So you just never know how you can change someone's life and you just never know what you um, what you're bringing awareness to. And as I've seen in here, some of you have mentioned that things I've mentioned, you just did not know even existed. So that's what we're here to do to make sure that you're aware of what's um, available. And I want to say, let's see, let's see. Um, let's see. There's a question applications of XR, do I find most interesting? So I personally do a lot more in the academic space um, because I'm a huge fan of academia. So any way that professors and teachers and instructors use um, AR, VR in the classroom, that is probably like for me personally, my sweet spot. I love speaking with educators as well. So in case any of you out there happen to be educators. But um, recently I took part judging in, um, in uh, this event that students had where they created different apps and one of the students created like an entire chemistry, VR chemistry lab that could be used in the classroom. I thought it was amazing. So seeing things like that, um, ways that people can learn, those are hands down my most like favorite applications, any way that you can teach um, with AR or VR. Okay, so... There was another question. I know we're getting close to time now. Um, there was a question from Danielle. Do you believe that the development of these technologies can lead to physically experiencing the sensations experienced in a virtual reality? So if you have haptics, um, you can do that. Haptics has been around for, around for a while. So um, you can already start to actually feel um, what's being experienced um, in the real world. I know top of mind, I know, um, there's two YouTubers that I really like, Cass and Shari. They actually have tried out haptic body suits. I would say if you happen to find their YouTube channel, it gives you an idea of, um, of what that's like. Um, okay. And I want to say... think let's see and then the final question that i have here um and i think someone might have answered just with regards to job opportunities and i'll just answer that one in general for everyone so um what i will suggest is if you're looking to um find job opportunities in this particular space with Microsoft particularly, I would say check out Microsoft Careers. Um, I always suggest that folks type in mixed reality to see what job um, openings are available. 
in addition to that, just because there's so much happening right now in this space, uh, whatever companies that you may come across as you're out exploring what's available with um, AR and VR, check out the comp check out the company pages, check out their job um, the job pages as well to see what's available. Uh, you don't have to work for a company per se. You can also start your own um, as well, your own venture. I've seen that happen plenty of times. And just also do know that there's a lot of opportunity in this space. You don't have to necessarily just be a developer to work in um, in this particular world. There's folks who work in sales, folks who work in marketing, for example. There's designers. Um, there's folks who, um, the ones that are creating uh, 3D assets. Uh, for me personally, a big part of my role here at Microsoft is content creation for this space. So I just want you to know that there's a lot of different paths you can go if you're looking for um, for job roles in this space. But if anything, I will say, as you come across different names in this industry, just check out their website, see um, see if they're hiring and, uh, and, and apply, I would say. And so I think that is going to be it for us today. As I mentioned, there will be a stream um, coming up uh in two weeks a week and a half two weeks <laughs> from now so i'll be back uh to cover more around that time on a new topic so dion i will pass over to you thank you so much april yes i've pasted in the chat a few times the link to the upcoming session please make sure to check that out i've also shared a link and i'm going to share it again right now to our survey we really appreciate your feedback we want to make sure we are delivering content that everyone is interested in, but based on the chat today, I can tell that this is a topic that everyone is interested in. So if you have a few moments to fill out the survey, we'd greatly appreciate it. And April, thank you so much for being here today. And we can't wait until next time. Yes, thanks. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone, thank you.